Thanks to RX Bar for supporting the PC Perspective podcast. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash pcper and use the promo code pcper. That's rxbar.com slash pcper, promo code pcper. Hey everybody, welcome to the PC Perspective podcast. This is episode number 516. Being recorded episode, or episode. Being recorded episode? Yeah. October 3rd, 2018. I'm Alan Malventano. I'm Jeremy Holstrom. I'm Pale Josh Walrush. And then there's 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 an Alex, like he's hiding. He's over there. He might contribute. We'll see. Because uh we're missing a Ryan and a Ken. They're delayed on flights back from somewhere. I don't know. They're somewhere. They're not here yet. Uh maybe they'll show up in the middle of the podcast. I don't know. Stranger things have happened. Um, all right, let's get through the the, the pre-starting show warm-up minutia, I guess. Uh, PCPro.com slash podcast. It's where you can find the show notes and a bunch of other helpful links. Um, Twitter.com slash PCPer or Twitter.com slash Ryan Shrout, where you can ask Ryan like where he is and why isn't he here right now? Anyway. Uh, pcper.com slash subscribe lets you subscribe to our mailing list, which I'm not sure if that went out today, but usually it does. Uh, we send out an email to let you know that we're about to record a show or do some other live streaming type event, which I think we're having some come up with, uh, you know, these new GPUs and, and stuff. We're probably going to talk to Tom at some point, mm -hmm. I, would, I would assume. Yeah, I think it's coming later this month, but nothing confirmed. Yeah, we're trying to get them out uh, so we can talk stuff. Hopefully the, you know, overclocking stuff will be a little more worked out by then and out of uh, alpha slash beta status <laughs> <laughs> so we can get some uh, gory details out of them on that stuff. Anyway, uh, patreon.com slash pcper. It's where you can uh, kick us some coin and help us keep the lights on, basically. Um did we do a mailbag? I did not see one published. I think the gang's been out all week, so. Hmm. Okay. Rockers. Well, yeah. we normally that's, we normally that's do a weird. mailbag. That's, that's. They didn't even ask me to do it. Yeah, I don't. I don't know what happened. Huh. Because hmm. we did the we tried to do it the week before, but then Jim got something going on, and then the questions didn't show up until like late Friday oh, night, and you know my what? weekend was then shot and. Yeah, that's, bad that's what happened. Jim usually coordinates that for us, and he's been a little under the weather. Oh, that's right. Yeah, so um, yeah, yeah. that's probably what happened uh, that time. Not the norm for us, but we're, uh, we'll are we get back on track with those. Yeah. Um, I almost want to say the Teespring link instead of the joshtech.com Josh link. Joshtech.com. Go to joshtech, two Ks, dot com. Uh, it will bring you to our PC per merch store. Second case is silent. Yeah, the size is silent. No, it ain't. Silent second K. No. So where you can get our merch. Uh, cool stuff. We need to like add some stuff to this at some point. We got something to freshen up the merch store with. We're nice open for mail a bag. Um, I, I, I guess. Yeah, that's an idea. Okay, uh, what else we got here? Uh, I don't know, we got stuff. We got, we got stuff. stuff to talk about. We got stuff to talk about. Fragging Frogs, coming up. Uh, Fragging Frog 17th VLAN. 17, those annual, Jeremy? They're when what? we have them, because it is an amazing amount of work for Lenny, who puts all the work in behind the scenes to get these things going. And so, I mean, we do them as we can. This all one right. is uh, a little bit off of our normal uh, format in that we haven't really sought out any sponsors. So you're showing up for fun, which of course means that all the people who only showed up for prizes are not going to show up, which, you know, I'm not totally upset about because, you know, there's nothing like a grown man crying across team speak because he didn't win a processor. October 13th, car. Uh, I will at least probably be creeping on the, on the team speak. Um, even if I'm not playing stuff, I usually try to at least get on and chat with the folks on there for a while. Uh, 
and there's a couple of related threads talking about like what's gonna how it all works and what's gonna be played and things like that. So uh, yeah, definitely check it out at the PC per forum. Um, guess might as well just jump right into the reviews, huh? Jump into it. Jump in. So, um, which card is this? Okay, so uh, we had the uh, Asus Strix uh, 1080 Ti. Uh, it was, uh, you know, pretty pretty beefy uh, 1080 Ti card. Ran pretty quiet. Uh, ran relatively cool. Really good cooler on it compared to uh, the power draw. And then, oh no, use two hands, man. Uh, yeah. Then came um, something that was like. Another half of a slot thicker, basically. Um, man, that thing is like yeah, monstrous. That, thing, that thing's built like a tank. Sorry. I think I, I still somewhere right. may have one of the triple slot Asus, like uh, G, uh, GTX 580. Uh, yeah. So, is that um, right? So, what we're talking about is the Asus Strix RTX 2080 Ti. Which is just, it's a beast. Um, Can you buy this now? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure, actually. Uh, Ken uh, wrote up the review of this guy. Actually, what? The, the answer to that is is no. Oh, you can't find it, them anywhere. It? Oh, sorry. I'm, Even our our very own Scott Michaud up in Canada, who uh, pre-ordered, uh -huh. has not received anything. Interesting. I don't know anyone. It may be more. Huh. I don't know anyone who has pre-ordered and actually gotten anything. So uh except reviewers. One feature I like uh that I thought was a nice touch about this is they added a uh hey, you can just shut the LEDs, the RGBs off by hitting a button. Uh in other words, like you don't have to install the software and go through all that like the Asus specific software to control the lighting. Please let this catch on. Uh, you know, yeah, because I would imagine most people probably aren't using Asus's software. They're probably using like you know Precision X or something like most other people are using. Or I forget what the what's the other one. You don't like the ROG Strix stuff? Um, uh, I don't know. I've never used it. And I've, I've even had Asus. It. I've even had Asus GPUs, and I'm still like, I don't know, force of habit. I'm, yeah, set, I'm setting my ways. Get off my lawn. <laughs> anyway, um, big honking card, big honking cooler, uh, dual eight pin uh, power connectors. Even though I don't think you can go much over the normal amount you can go over for the power limit. Um. Uh, either way, uh, when you get these big honking coolers on these cards, that can at most draw, I think, it, I think it works out to around 300 watts um, with, all, with everything maxed on whichever, you know, regardless of the card and how, whether it comes a little bit overclocked from the factory and maybe even the power limit over 250, like the standard 250 a little bit from the factory. Um, usually, like, the max you're able to go works out to, like, the same number, regardless of who you get the card from. Um, and what we found with most of these cards is... Uh, especially the ones with big hunk and cores like this, uh, is that you're pretty much just riding the power limit. You know, you're, you're a comfortable margin away from where it would start to limit itself based on temperature. Um, so you end up just riding the power limit. And so it's very much just, you know, how good of a, you know. But what it, can it do with 1.22 gigawatts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it can, you know, travel back to 1950, whatever. Wouldn't those graphics blow their minds? Oh, absolutely. If they yeah. had anything to show them on. You know, on their black and white tube. Anyway. Integrated anti-aliasing. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's built in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so as you can see right there, uh, even like Unigen you know, Heaven just running, you know, temperatures going up to like a little, little bit over 60 C. GPU temp, that's a nice, comfortable margin away from well, really... I, I found these graphs really interesting. And the, correct me if I'm wrong here, but these are pretty consistent. You're wrong. <laughs> Fine. Sorry. So there's, there's this trend here. So you, you see the, the clock crank up real hard and fast. Yeah, initially. Initially for, you know, 20, 60 seconds or so. Uh -huh. um, 
but then it backs off and goes steady, and then the remember this is quiet mode. Is, okay, so but it's still the trend still applies here, um, and then it settles off at a temperature, but the the clock speed settles well before the the temp saturates. Yeah, it's just it's just down to how you know how Nvidia is doing their tuning, mm. like how they you know however they profile these things. But if you notice, uh, overclocked, holy crap, even once it settles down, it's still over 2 gigahertz, mm. steady. Um, and considering this is a 2080 Ti, which has just a crap load of transistors on the thing, uh, yeah, impressive. And there's a, compared to a Founders Edition, also did just about the same. So there you go, if you, you know, Basically, for your overclock, even with the big honking coolers, you're not necessarily going to get a lot more out of these cards, uh, mainly due to riding the power limit. Um, there's your overclock temperature. Obviously, the Founders Edition is running way closer to the point where it starts to throttle based on temperature, it's somewhere around 80. I think it's. I think on these, it's a little more shy of 80 compared to like the 1080s. Um, or just the 10 series cards. Anyway, uh, let's see. So you can't get it. How much is the price premium over the other ones, assuming that you could get it? It's what, $11.99 uh, for the Founders Edition? So 50 bucks yeah, above that? Yeah, only 50 bucks over for a card with arguably much better cooling and uh, that, you could that you could potentially run just quieter doing the same thing as a founder's card. So if you're if you're valuing that, right? Um, if you I don't value, value anything. If you value the look <laughs> of the card, if you value the uh, RGBs, you say you already have an Asus motherboard, you're trying to match, you're trying to also do the, you know, synchronized RGB lighting uh, between the motherboard and the GPU and things like that. Probably worth the extra coin, but the catch is if you can get the card. Um, you can't. Which you can't for now. Um, Actually, you can. There, there are a couple of samples available on Amazon, but <laughs> guess what the price is? Oh, they jacked them up. Twenty four hundred bucks. Oh, okay. So no. So yeah, you you probably shouldn't buy those. I would recommend not buying those. When you yeah, really... I had to check on that today for my job because we want to buy one for, you know, the tensor cores and and all the other fun stuff uh, that you can do professionally with yeah. those puppies, and it's like, yeah, no, there's nothing. I'm on auto notify on a bunch of stuff, and it's no, yeah. Nvidia hasn't done great with this with the TI, but you can understand it. It's a huge chip. Who knows what kind of yields they're getting that uh, that are hitting the bins that they want. And, uh, you know, you got all kinds of other little farcical things going on with tariffs and fun stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's still just using GDDR6, right? Yep. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So you'd think they'd have enough supply, but mm, who knows? But there's plenty of RTX 2080s, I think, right? There were. I haven't looked in a bit. Yeah, I think there are still are. Anyone? Anyone? I think. Mueller? I think there's. I think there's a lot of people that are maybe holding out in hopes that the TI is going to come down a little bit. Yeah. Oh, it's not going to come down anytime <laughs> soon. It, yeah, yeah. I, it's just. I agree with you guys. And it's a shame, especially with the whole tariff thing potentially coming down the line and. I'm sure that's going to. I don't think it's a 25. Uh, Jedi Master Allen says 25 percent up. Tick on on these tariffs, and that's I don't I don't think it's going to be that high. Yeah, I don't think it's that high either. I mean, you're going to look at maybe five percent, from what I understand, which is still significant when you're paying twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, but it's not twenty five percent, so it's going to hurt a little. I think it's, but you know what? You, know, you, you just go. get a little. You go, I, never mind. <laughs> you go. It has one for seven ninety. What, the RTX 2080? Yep. 2080 Wind Force. That's not bad. Yeah. No, it's not oh, bad at yeah, all. Not Everyone else is 840, 850. Hmm. 
Oh, there's a TI for only 2300 bucks. Oh, 2200 Yeah, people yeah, are just coming gouging. down. Anyway. If only we had more games that even took advantage of the extra features of that and made it so that people wouldn't just want to get a 1080 Ti instead. Basically. You know, since they basically it trades blows with 2080. Yep. You know. Or what, half the price? Well, I mean, if you're finding them, I mean, new ones are still like, what, six something? Uh, right? For the TI? New ones, for, yeah. Because like the used ones are going for like 500. Yeah. I would imagine the new ones are at least 100 more if you've got used ones going mm, for 500. 694? Oh, for the Zotac amp. So is, it's is stupidly overclocked. Is that a 1080 Ti? Yeah, so like they're they're kind of holding like 1080 Ti's are kind of holding their holding their value, uh, just because the 2080 is kind of priced high and matches it for like all practical purposes today at least, um, you know, except for a bunch of games that have yet to be released. So anyway, uh, are we doing the ad? Uh, we'll go through three stories and hit the ad ad in the middle of them. Oh, okay, cool. Did you just say hit the ad ad? No. Are we doing the ad? Because I could, I could hit the ad ad, but no, 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 you know, no, it would no. only bounce off the armor because it's too thick. No, 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 no. But you hit it. <laughs> All right. So let's go through some news. Um, but we're not going to go ad ad tipping. Ad ad. No. Oh, it's fun. That was, was a product that never took off. The ad ad racetrack had a had a catchy song though. Mm-hmm. Not gonna sing no. it for us. Oh my! <sighs> no. At at racetrack, da, 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 da. it's like a Saturday morning thing. And anyway, <sighs> go. Okay. Uh, lucky number seven for AMD. What what is so lucky for AMD here, Jeremy? Well, you know that process that uh, Intel's having issues with and tossing money at oh you mean like the seven nano well is it seven for ten. intel what's the that's number? 10 for intel okay 10 yeah, yeah amd is still pretty much in line to hit the seven nanometer for the next release of ryzen gosh and that's shocking they've only had yeah. that on their roadmap for the past two years also true yes and on the gpus as well well i hope so, they can uh, hit, i hope they can actually hit it well i mean the epics are already Confirmed to be. Wow. The, the Epic 2s are. It was this, this news was we didn't know that the Ryzen 3s were necessarily going to be. We kind of assumed that they were, which, you know, makes perfect sense. And now pretty much, you know, it's still a rumor, but it's pretty much confirmed that this is going to be what we're going to see. Uh, and uh, the, there'll definitely be a Ryzen 3 coming out, which, uh, you know, I mean, again, you sort of assume that's going to be the case. Well, but it's, it's, it's Zen 2. Or sorry, Zen 2, not, not Ryzen, Ryzen 3, 3, Zen 2. Okay. No, Ryzen 3 is, is the low-end Ryzen yes. chips. Yeah, yeah. So, so Zen 2 is, is the next generation of, of Zen. Right now, we're on the Zen Plus on 12 nanometer, which yeah. we can go ad nauseum about what exactly 12 nanometer is. But, yeah. Uh, yeah the, but the all big, the weeks the, so I far think the, the big 7. argument was... Was it going to be TSMC 7 nanometer for uh, the desktop stuff, or was it going to be Global Foundries? And, of course, the answer to that is it's all going to be TSMC because Global Foundries pulled the handles on their 7 nanometer process and decided to stop sinking billions of dollars into developing it. Okay. So there you go. So, yeah, Ryzen 7s, Ryzen 5s, and Ryzen 3s will be coming out soon. Yeah, but it's, and, no, 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 the, the 3000 series is sorry, what yes. probably it's going to be called. Yes, but yeah, that's, that's going to be spring 2019. Because hmm. they only just got them back a little bit ago. So we're looking it, spring, midsummer for the Ryzen yeah. 3000 series. What is this supposed to do? Is it supposed to help them on performance necessarily or just bring price down? Uh, it's going to help on performance. It's going to make it denser. You're probably going to see higher core counts. 
Hmm. Possibly. Uh, they're going to supposedly rearrange how they do CCXs. So uh, they could be more efficient, uh, increase in IPC. And then, you know, they're, if, if they're hitting 4.2 4. gigahertz now with some of the first iterations coming back from the fab, then they can do some adjustments, uh, you know, optimize things. And so, you know, we could see 4.4, 4.6 stuff boosted maybe 4.244 base yeah. we'll see how it goes but when you uh when you when you add that into increasing the ipc up to what kind of looks to be intel levels um with their latest what is it cabby leg is our latest coffee like i can't remember coffee anymore like, no, i always got them all mixed up <laughs> it isn't like marmaduke end, no. i don't know uh but uh <laughs> Yeah, you're you're gonna see some uh, nice little uplifts and uh, probably improved uh, multi CPU performance, increased cache sizes, um, better TDPs, all kinds of fun things. And yeah, they can they can make them smaller than what Intel is going to be able to do for a while because of their mass at ten nanometer. So in other words, uh, good for everybody because it'll probably force Intel to take some margin off of their off of their CPUs uh, uh, to at least try to match what AMD's putting out. So good for everybody, except for... No, they're currently tossing all the money that'll stick at 10, 10 nanometer. So yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Thunderbolt won't even scratch the surface. Well, you know how... Like, hey, Jeremy, this through. is Jeremy's thing, it isn't is. it? It is. I was waiting for Jeremy. Ah, Jeremy. So the best thing about the old Surface models were that they didn't have, you know, USB-C Thunderbolt, right? Okay. So for the new Surface Pro 6 and Laptop 2 and Stereo 2, Intel st or Microsoft stuck with their strengths and went with no USB-C or Thunderbolt on any of them. Again? Why? Again. These are current I products. I know. Well, I don't. This makes no sense. I mean, at least the, the, the Surface Pro ha has the Surface Connect, so you can connect the keyboard to it. Uh... Right, but they've stuck with the exact same connectivity. So you've got USB 3, uh, Mini DP, Micro SD, and if you've got one of the tablet -y ones that it connects uh, to the keyboard. I, the battery life is better. Uh, you're looking at 14 and a half on the uh, laptop pro, uh, 2 and 13 and a half on the pro 2s or the pro 6 rather so i mean that's a bit better the screens have gotten brighter across the board which was probably one of the main uh complaints a lot of people heard about the original surface devices is that they just honestly weren't that bright unless you were in perfect conditions uh they've stuck more or less with the same resolutions again the, the screen technology hasn't changed. You're still looking at, I, at least for the Pro 6 and the Laptop 2, they've gone with an unspecified 8th gen, which could be a cabbie, it could be a coffee, it's probably a coffee refresh, but digging could not find a single thing about it, so hard to say. And before you give them the benefit of the doubt, the new Surface Studio 2, they stuck with 7th gen for that. They, they didn't mm. even upgrade the processor. Okay. And that one, which is the all-in-one, comes with a GTX 1060 or 1070. So again, it's chewing like sort of anything new. Now, for those that love like the Surface aesthetic, you're going to like this because it looks exactly the same. It's got, you know, a fairly nice design to it, uh, especially coming out of Microsoft and, you know, I think they killed the guy that made the Zune. At some point, it's kind of sad, but there you go. Yeah, but uh, but the the problem with the Surface Studio is like since you're it's you're kind of, you're not going to upgrade it. You know, it's not really an upgradable stuck. device. You're stuck with whatever you get. So usually, when if you're going to be stuck with what you get, usually you want the newest, fastest thing and the thing you bought to try to hold off. You know, for the longest possible time. But if you're getting the thing and it's two generations ago on the that's hardware, just crazy talk. It, it Al. just it just kind of baffles me that like you know things just going to be behind it's behind out of the box it's behind 
Yeah. And you can't well, And what's it. even more frustrating about it is the Surface Hub 2 we were talking about last week yeah. comes with the cartridge, so in theory you can upgrade the CPU. Hmm. So it was sort of a thing of, oh, look, Microsoft's kind of figured out, you know, people like newer hardware. Yeah. But only on their giant electronic whiteboard, apparently. Hmm. So, you know, it's it's not horribly disappointing because it's a surface and they've, they've never been cutting edge, but they're nice and they're handy to carry around. They've got great battery life. Uh, if you like the, the flip book style where you can use it as a tablet or a keyboard, you know, it's kind of lovely, but honestly, I keep looking at them and going, and this is why I've never been tempted. Even with this brand new, uh, surface all access pass, they went through Dell And so essentially what you do is you sign up for 24 monthly payments and you get your device, you get an Office 365 uh, subscription, you get support of some description and some benefits on the Windows Store that, you know, we all spend all day looking at. Mm -hmm. And they say, oh, it starts at 25 bucks. Well, yeah, but that's for the little tiny pretend tablet Surface Go thing. If you're looking at the bare minimum uh, Surface uh, 6, it's actually more like 48 bucks a month. It's a good, cheap way to get yourself something that is going to be good enough. But, you know, honestly, it just, it's a hard sell for an enthusiast. And it's a hard sell for, like, the typical enthusiast that has people contacting them, asking them what system they should get. Like, I would be hesitant to recommend these, mainly because, like, the, you know, I mean, I have a person right now asking me about stuff, and they want to be able to connect storage that goes quickly, and I would normally recommend Thunderbolt, and they also want to be able to dock it. Well, you can't really dock it. You know, you can't pass the display out by the convenient method. Granted, Mm. Thunderbolt docks are still a little bit pricey, but, like... I don't like them either. Yeah, Maybe that's what Microsoft's waiting for. Like maybe they're waiting for the docks to be more practical and stuff. But in my mind, like even once they become more practical, well then now you have to upgrade the dang mobile device to be able to use the dock or use the, you know, whatever Thunderbolt 3 thing you got. What about Wide Eye? Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, Tim Vary pointed out that a, uh, Sony launched a, well, is launching a miniaturized PlayStation Classic retro console with 20 preloaded games. Is the PlayStation Classic um, spot. And they're celebrating the 25th anniversary of the PlayStation. Man, was that 25 years ago? It was. Jeez. So my first question is, is please tell me those are little USB ports in the front. Uh, I don't, I don't know, actually. USB for power through an AC adapter. Oh, wait, though an AC adapter is not included. But you can use any, like, USB charger. Uh, still have a door. Well, I mean, yeah, it would have to, like, how are you going to, like... Well, it includes controllers. Oh, okay, okay. So, I don't know if there would be USB. Uh, Maybe. That looks USB. Maybe. Maybe possible that why is, not that is tiny so cute look, look at that this is just so cute maybe they had like a person with a really big hand will it that. will it really open that thing up if you press the button no uh pushing the eject button what? changes games oh supposedly it includes final mm. fantasy 7 final fantasy 7 second three we're, we're done here yeah ridge, ridge racer. racer four i mean you know Oh. Is this Parappa the Rappa on it? And supposedly it's gonna, you'll be able to save your games. They'd say it's like some sort of virtual thing. I guess maybe it just has like Flash in it. I can just save it. Not sure. Um, comes with HDMI cable and a USB cable. Oh, wait. Uh, remakes of the original game pads that lack the dual shocks, dual analog sticks. Well, so much rig tracer. <laughs> yeah, you're going to play Ridge Racer without analog sticks? 
so I wonder if you can take a more modern PlayStation controller and plug into them. Well, it's a different kind of plug, so I don't know if... I don't well, know if how it's, would... Doesn't the PlayStation DualShock 3 and 4 have a mini I, USB? Yeah, I think the newer, newer ones, but... If you have one from this era, like it's not, it's obviously not going to work, right? <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think it'll fit. I do, it definitely won't fit. It's a little bit uh, larger than a USB plug. Um, anyway, uh, what's the price supposed to be? Uh, 100 bucks available on December 3rd of this year. Interesting. So, so much memories on here. We got people in the chat talking. You know, Ridge Racer would be awesome. Parasite Eve. Yeah. That brings back memories. What was it? Uh, I mean, Resident Evil. Yeah. Resident right? Evil was amazing. Wasn't that, that was, that was the platform, right? That was where Resident Evil mm -hmm. happened. You know, the, the time limited game where you're waiting on scenes to load off of a disc. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then you had the, uh, the really, really bad, pre-rendered video that was like 320 by 240 resolution and upscaled. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, I, I have a confession to make. What's that? I've never owned a PlayStation. Really? Never. Nope. Well, my confession is that I did not buy the PlayStation until there was a mod chip available. <laughs> that's because I, I did had... rent them from game stores. Th that's because I had children. <laughs> I was not, uh, you know... I was not opposed to purchasing games. It's just that I'll be damned if I was going to like let, you know, let the kids play with the original uh, kind of expensive PlayStation, at least at the time, uh, PlayStation games directly and scratch the heck out of the discs. Yeah. So the only thing that uh, got placed into that PlayStation was backups of games. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Which the children destroyed often, and I had to crank out extra duplicates of often. Especially, uh, what was it? Oddworld? Oh, Abe's that was on there. Oddworld Odyssey. Oddworld was on there. Um, and then there was that, like, um, like skeleton dude running around, like medieval. Oh, it was called Medieval. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. It was like Legacy of Cain? Uh, yeah, there was some good stuff back then, man. Like, that was... Was, um, Soul Reaver? Or is that PS2? That might have been PS2. Anyway. So many good games. Okay. Um, next up, uh, we have an ad. We do. We do. So, uh, we would like to thank... RX Bar for supporting this episode of the PC Perspective podcast. Uh, we had a, a round of these. Um, they didn't last long. Yeah, they didn't last long. They they actually went so quickly that I didn't even get to have one. Like they were just gone. Alex had one. I, I saw did. Him. He had. They, a, they were quite wonderful. Yeah, I think uh, I had like two or three of them actually. I, I'm I'm glad you enjoyed them. I'm glad everybody else in the office enjoyed them. But like I think before. You know, I think by the time we did the first ad read for them, like they were all gone. Yeah, we were we were on the uh, we were on the last one in the office when we did the first ad read. Yeah, and it, they're good. I mean, yeah. they really are. Uh, I've picked them up. You know, going through when we're traveling, I've picked them up on the road. They're it's simple good food. I yeah. I like them a lot. So uh, straight from RX Bar, they 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 call it a protein bar made with 100 percent whole gr ingredients. And no BS. No bad stuff like added sugar, artificial colors, flavors, preservatives, or fillers. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, you're just making the thing out of old stuff. Like, mm -hmm. no fake stuff. No BS, as they say. Um, 14 different flavors. And they also have seasonal flavors. Uh, ideal for breakfast on the go or throwing in your bag. Or, you know, it's kind of like the... You know, your typical bar type thing that you just kind of have on you for a snack. Mm -hmm. um, except without a bunch of preservatives in it and things like that. And just things that, you know, you don't necessarily want to put in your body. Um, and they have a, there is a note here, RX Nut Butter. 
Ooh, that sounds really good. Uh, the single serving packets that are squeezable and spreadable. Uh, nut butter with nine grams of high quality protein. Pairs great with fruit, rice cakes, pretzels, or straight out of the pouch. That I, sounds dangerous. Yeah, but it's it, it's so good. That sounds like someone would just mow through several of the single serving packets <laughs> of that uh, rather quickly. Anyway, uh, if you are uh, tempted, if you've been tempted by my by my words about RX Bar here, uh, you can get twenty five percent off your first order at rxbar.com slash pcper and use the promo code pcper at checkout. That's rxbar.com slash pcper promo code PC per. And we thank RX Bar for supporting the podcast. All right. What we got next? We've got 20 seconds of no profanity. Uh, yes, there is that. Uh, Gigabyte launching uh, M.2 PCI Express NVMe by two uh, SSDs. So Gigabyte's going the quasi budget uh, SSD route here. 128 gig, 256 gig, half a, ter half a terabyte. Um, do they say which controller they're using? Let's see. What do the specs look like? Um, 1.2 gig per second out of the 256 gig. So That's Alan, we need we need a new segment here. We need a. Can Alan name that controller from a response graph? Uh, that's got to be the same one as the uh, that's the, on the, the two by uh, my digital SSD because that's about the same speed, right? Yeah, and I think that one's a Fizon, but it's it, that seems low even for the by twos we've seen before. No, it's me. not. It's about well, is, it, is that about you, the you same? know well, you're the expert. You know, no, I thought I thought it was higher. Um, I could be mistaken because it's been a while since I looked at that. Where I thought uh, Alex was going to go was like. If only we had like an SSD decoder yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that said which controller was in which SSD. Dang it, I might need to resurrect that thing. That's a dark and long path, Alan. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. But I feel like things are getting consolidated enough now to where it might we might actually be able to do something like that again. And, you know, <sighs> anyway. Um, do we have any prices? I don't see any prices, but I would imagine that they are probably in the, I would hope, 20 cents per gig or high tens uh, range if they, that is if they plan on selling these uh, in the current landscape because now you've got plenty of uh, like BPX Pros and which is a buy for fire breathing SSDs. Josh, did you order one of those? You were talking about it a week or two no, ago. No, because I'm, I'm cheap. Oh, all right. Well, you're so enthused I, about I it. I don't I need it. And well, you know, I, I was enthused about it. And I'd love to have it. But I one, I don't really have a need for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And two, my child just broke his finger. So there right, goes that. Right. That two hundred and sixty dollars for an SSD. Well, you're being all practical and stuff. Ah, screw that. OK. Dang, practical life. Stupid adult. Responsible. Things Can we just right. hand in our adult cards and stop doing that because you just shuffle it to the bottom of the magic. I try, deck. but anyway, uh, next up is Jeremy talking to us about the upcoming difficulties of getting Intel inside your computer. It is true, it is. Tell us more. They make oh, products got... for that. <laughs> yes, is there an app for that? <laughs> AMD makes products for that as uh, long as they take advantage of it. That's true. So you got Novatech and Compel Electronics, which are two fairly large uh, providers uh, for pre-built machines before you buy the machine from someone else. Okay. And so, I mean, it's sort of up in the air. Is this simply that there's a lot of people focused on the 10 man nanometer problem as opposed to production? Is it that they're having issues with the current one? Is it that Xeons are actually selling like hotcakes right now and they've realized, well, we make a lot more money off of the server side. So, yeah, consumers can go sit and spin for a little bit. There's probably a lot of reasons why it's happening, but long story short, it does seem to be happening. So you've, you've already got uh, Dell and other 
server providers saying, you know, we uh, we got some nice Epic products you might want to think about. Uh, they're they're in stock. They're not that expensive, and gosh darn it, they're damn good. So you know, I, I'm really hoping Lisa Sue can make you know a, a quick grab at this opportunity because it's not going to last her forever. Uh, Intel has just like more money just sitting in the back of their couch than AMD could ever dream of making. So they're going to fix the issue. For now, but the thing is, if you can catch people in an upgrade cycle, just do it, push it, do whatever you can to get stuff out there so you get a bit more money so that you can start snowballing yourself back into the business. Yeah. You've already seen your stock price, like, what is it, triple in value over the past year? And, and that's were, and, and the thing you're talking about is the exact kind of thing AMD tends to be good at. Yeah. They have a habit of doing that lately, right? Um, mm-hmm. so, so, yeah, I mean. Let's and see. if they're smart, they'll look at NVIDIA and say, oh, look. People can't buy your newest video card and they can't afford the one that's actually out on market. You may got these ones. Yeah, maybe they're not quite as good, but hey, they're cheaper. Yeah. Get three of them. Have fun. So we'll see. It's going to be an interesting time to see how AMD sort of deals with what's with the opportunity they've got now and how long that they've got that window for. All right, uh, real quick on this one, because everybody that cares about this story has probably already witnessed this by way of their Facebook app telling them they need to sign back in. Uh, Facebook had some sort of a data breach. 50 million accounts were breached earlier this week. Um, what was so the... there's a feature that lets you look at your own profile as if you weren't you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with and that. And this is something that people do? Isn't it called incognito mode? No, no, no. You, you do it to oh. like... So when you go through your settings and you set what's visible and what's not visible to people, mm-hmm. right? So you don't want you like your birth year showing or your birth whatever, you know, or you don't want your location showing. You can sort of confirm it by just going, you know, like in a, this little drop down, you change it to like, show me what other people see. Like, show me what my friends see and show me what like mm-hmm. people that aren't my friends see. And you get to just see the page and you can kind of like go down to where it would normally tell like about you and you can make sure that the stuff you don't want showing is actually not showing. Right. Yeah. Something tells me people are using this to look at themselves and say, do I look cool to my friends now? Well, I mean, I tell you what though, the people that figured out this breach, uh, were apparently using that feature to look at everybody else's (laughs) profiles. (laughs) Uh, I'm hoping that they got the thing. Well, no, because if they can see the thing that only you can see, which is one of the options, then other people could see what normally only you could see, which I guess is probably what they were doing. Well, and if you were logged in and you do that login via Facebook thing, in theory, because they had your access tokens, they could do that. Yeah. Now, the funny thing is that uh, earlier, just after this came out, um, it was pointed out after a couple of people tested it that as long as the person goes in screws around and logs out within an hour. It's never logged by Facebook. Facebook today said, well, we've got proof that nobody used this to access any third party stuff. Uh huh. Like, okay. One of these (laughs) is incorrect. And I'm going to bet on which one that I think is incorrect. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. All knowing, all seeing. Yep. 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 Well, more of the story. Um, you know, don't put your info on something that you don't want. Somebody else getting it at some point, even oh, if they're not supposed to. Months. Ha, ha. I, 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 I put <laughs> on, on my, Facebook. my personal. I've never been on Facebook. Sorry, Josh. I, I put on my personal one nine hundred number on Facebook. Oh, sweet. One nine hundred Josh Tech. I mean, it was a smart move to move on the late night TV. <laughs> <laughs> Josh, this no is not. This TV is not. A, this is not a three a.m. Uh, TV commercial. Between between Tales from the Crypt and Elvira. Yeah. Okay. Come on, Tales from the Crypt was great. I know it, it was. was. I that, wish it was not around anyone so after much. Elvira. Tales from the Crypt. Do you was remember badass. Commander USC USA? Uh, Commander USA's groovy movies. I don't remember yeah. that. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. It was great. It's fantastic. Look it up someday. Uh, well, thank you. You're welcome. Didn't the like Elvira thing like start in like Florida or something? What? I don't remember. Or not Elvira. No, the there's 
the what was that like mistress there was some Elvira mistress of the dark yeah uh, it might have been different there was some tales from the crypt style show there were so many knockoffs yeah there was a, yeah it was not low forget. budget tales from it was the very low budget yeah maybe it was Elvira was it the one where uh, you know you saw the the scene of the farm scene and then they did a chroma thing with creepy music in the yeah. background? Yeah, I think so. And I can't remember what the name of that that, but it was another you know Twilight Zone, Tales from the Crypt, where yeah. nothing good nuts. ever happened at the end, and it was Dark Mirror before yep. Dark Mirror. Yeah. yeah. Okay, uh, let's see what we got next here. Um, walks like a laptop, but folds in your hand. Y-O-G-A yoga. Oh, uh, I get it. I should have sung that line, sorry. <laughs> Jeez. This one has two Thunderbolt ports. Oh, like actual Thunderbolt ports? I Really? Yeah. How how amazing to the thought of putting Thunderbolt on a device that you're trying to sell in 2018 since Thunderbolt's been out for like a couple of but, years. Oh, uh, Thunderbolt I, 3 came out last year? Yes. Yeah. Anyway. But the thing <sighs> is that, that this is heresy. It's heresy? That this is an abomination that should not exist. Why? It's a silver think pad. Well, they've been making them in black and silver for a while. It's still not right. Oh, I agree with you. I don't done it before. Doesn't make it right. Yeah, they're doing it to appease people that don't like black. There's apparently yeah. enough of a market of people that don't like a black uh, laptop that, you know, people that like to buy white Samsung monitors and uh, things like that. Yeah, I've got to interrupt real quick. Mm. Tales from the dark side. Tells from the dark ah, side. Ah, there you go. That's what it was. That was. Yep. Sorry. Had to had to throw that in it because be, it needed to be solved. You know, it's a, the horror of the yoga form factor. <laughs> <laughs> it was a segue. Oh man, that was a beautiful segue. Different horror yes. show. It yeah, that, is a different one. That you had that whole yoga with thing. the same kind of chroma. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that whole yoga thing has been. Uh, Pretty good um, success yeah. for one of them. Well, in, in a way, it's a diametric opposite of the surfaces we've been seeing because this puppy, uh, when the Inquirer tested it anyway, is going full out. I uh, like four and a half hours battery life, which is decent for, you know, what it is yeah. because it's not desperately trying to slow everything down to preserve that last drop of power. And, you know, 2560 by 14 40 resolution, brightness up to 500 nits. It's, you know, and this, this is one that's new on me and I haven't really seen much about it. And I decided I didn't care. Uh, Dolby vision HDR mm -hmm. that, that doesn't sound like real HDR to me. I mean, it's just, uh, it works. They're, they're supposedly really good screen screens. So good. In fact, that I know you mentioned OLED a couple times in, in this news thing. They had OLED available as an option for a couple of generations, and it's not available anymore. So they've replaced that with the HDR option. So it's, okay. apparently, it's apparently good enough that it can displace the OLED, which was already pretty impressive. Um, I just hope that they don't fall into the same issue with, like, when you try to do either this HDR-style screen or even the OLED screen, you run into, like, the screen has a wider color range, wider gamut, whatever you want to call it, then, like, it natively has much better range, um, especially in the case of the OLED. Um, and you actually have to, like, dial it back if you wanted to do things like photo editing and, like, if you wanted a standard color space, you actually have to, like, make it normal again instead of the reds, like, searing your retinas, right? Um, and for the longest time, uh, I, I bought the second-gen... OLED, and that thing went a year where the Intel like GPU driver had broken their implementation, whatever their little add-on software was, to, for you to control the color space. So you were just stuck with native, which, don't get me wrong, it's nice, vivid screen, like everything pops and it looks amazing, but then you try to edit photos on it and you, you can't because like if you try to make them look normal, 
then you turn around and look at them on any other display, they look just crappy because you were trying to dial things back, right? So yeah, it went like a whole year with like pages and pages on their forum of people, you know, complaining about like, hey, I'm like this, I can't control the color thing. Are you going to fix it? And it was this big, like he said, she said contest where Intel was pointing the finger at Lenovo. Lenovo was pointing the finger at Intel. Like everybody was giving each other the finger. And, you know, finally, I think like a month ago, they sorted it out because one of the updates fixed it. But it was so bad that even if you did a clean install and installed everything fresh, it would still break it. And like you couldn't even find the older version of the Intel driver on their site anywhere because like you. Oh, they were good at that. Yeah, there's like no mechanism to get. The older ones, there you have supposed to use the Lenovo software. It only pulls down the most recent. There's really no way to get to the old one. Um, yeah, Why so you would you just, ever want to run old normally, software? Normally, you know, 99 times out of 100, you don't need to go back. Uh, but when everything breaks something and you just no way around it, yeah, it kind of sucks. So I hope they don't fall into that whole trap with these other displays and this HDR stuff. They really need to support that better. Um you mean the whole trap of talking about something ad nauseum and it's already 9.15 because we've been going on for an hour and 15 minutes? Well, it's not 9.15 here. Well, it's 11.15 there. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, next. Ampere. Start shipping ARM-based 16 and 32 core EMAG processors for the data center. Nice. It's a ECR. Blah. It's a server chip <laughs> on TSMC 16 nanometer. Uh, it's a custom core, apparently. Runs at base 3 gigahertz, goes up to 3.3 gigahertz boost. That's pretty impressive. We don't have a whole lot of other details about this. We we have the, only know it's a 64-bit ARM, eight, ARM V8A uh, product. But we have, I mean, we, you know, they gave us some information about caches. I mean, it's got plenty of... You know, L2 and 32 megs L3 cache, which is plenty. Support up to 16 DIMMs, which is nice. But uh, I think one of the other things that really pops out is it's it 42 lanes of PCIe 3.0, which is pretty good. Uh, these things are 125 watt TDPs, which, considering 16 or 32 cores even though their arm is still pretty nice especially with all the other stuff involved yeah so i don't know if it's a real big chip i mean it's, it's not going to be small obviously uh but uh, you know 125 watts is pretty good and and if they can keep at the three gigahertz and boost up to 3.3 now and then uh it's going to be a nice performing little unit for where they're looking at it so yeah and it's supposed to match a lot of it's supposed to match like equivalent xeons as long as i would imagine as long as you're sticking with the simpler instructions since you yeah know, arm probably i mean you, you yeah it's 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 still arm i mean it's how much server software is really optimized for arm infrastructure not a whole lot i mean it's there but well your, you know. your, your standard kit for the linux stack is already ported over pretty well yeah yeah Made yeah. for for server side stuff. It's but I'm I'm, I'm talking yeah. about applications as well. Oh well, sure, sure. But if you're trying to do like a storage server or something, you know, yeah, you need a lot of PCI Express lanes. Well, it's got them, right? Yeah, um, it does. You know, and if if you're able to only spend like 900 bucks for the part as opposed to the equivalent Xeon Gold, which is like probably a few k. Yeah. Um. You know, that starts making people think about it. Yeah, so it's it's an interesting looking product, and uh, they thirty two threads is is still nothing to sneeze at, especially at eight hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, because what's the uh, what's the AMD Threadripper? You know, thirty two core. It's still what eight ninety nine. Uh, Plus or minus, yeah, 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 yeah. So. It's it's not a bad thing, especially if it's, you know, kind of rated for server applications. Uh, you know, and, and nobody's actually done any benchmarks on this. Um, I think one of the areas that they could potentially fall down is uh, kind of the fabric. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, they've, they've talked a little bit about it, but they don't talk. And that's, you know, as we know from from AMD's, you know, CCX to CCX um, communication, that's that's a bottleneck, 
and you know Intel has a big network type switching architecture for their larger core counts and then that takes up a significant chunk of power so it's going to be interesting to see how these guys handle that yep one thing on here that's kind of stands out for me is this thing has eight memory controllers on it yeah to talk to all that ram yeah that's on a that's a lot of nuts yeah Yeah. especially for an 850 dollars tiny tiny nuts yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's uh, you know, granted, it's going to have its specific things that it's really well suited for. You know, it's not going to be a jack of all trades. Um, but yeah, you need a lot of, you know, a lot of RAM hooked up, a lot of storage capability. Yeah, it's going to be interesting because there's, there's a lot of subtlety in designing a good server chip that is this wide. Mm-hmm and could handle that much memory. So uh, there could be a lot of contention. There could be a lot of uh, fabric contention that, that will slow down performance, though it, it all depends on how they actually implemented it. But 850 bucks is, that's kind of impressive. Indeed. All right, uh, next up, uh, Xilinx unveils Versal family of adaptive computer acceleration platform devices, uh, abbreviated ACAP. So this, I believe, maybe is the thing that Ken is coming back from? Is that like what he was checking out, I guess? The it might be part of what part of it? he was checking out. Xilinx Developer Forum, their CEO announced a new product family named Versal. So this is a thing... It's FPGAs. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, these are FPGAs. Okay. What are they supposed to do here? Uh, accelerate things, which, yeah, FPGAs accelerate things. And they're RGB. Uh, no, it's just, the, it's just the picture, Jeremy. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, but it being built on uh, TSMC 7 nanometer. Mm. Yeah, I did a quick read over this. It looks like this is introducing higher level programming components to. Okay, so like, sort of like, uh, you know, different blocks of things you can kind of like use. That's what it looks like. Like, like not just a straight out dumb FPGA, but like, you know, maybe the ability to make it a little bit more like an actual CPU in some ways Good to day. accelerate certain things, right? Sounds kind of like what they're trying to do. Yeah. But it- Heterogeneous acceleration. We, we might want to retouch on this when we can get it straight from Ken's mouth. Yeah. Oh, dual core. Interesting. Adaptable hardware engines. Intelligent engines. Yeah, it looks like there's a bunch of different, uh, you know, blocks of stuff that you can... The way FPGAs work generally is sort of like, you know, sort of like plug-and-play-ish, kind of like wiring except you're programming the wiring. But I'm thinking of it kind of old school. I'd imagine it's come a long ways. Anyway, yeah, we'll uh, probably touch on this again next week and let let Ken run with it when he's actually here. I'm not touching that with a 10-foot pole. It's too much going on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the short version is, you know, FPGA can be way faster at doing specific things. It's, it's sort of like an ASIC, right? Um, you know, except... Except, it's, you it's know, reprogrammable. programmable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's in the name. Well, yeah. It's pro- in the field. You can program it yeah. in the field. And there's a, yeah. there's a grid. Amazing. It's amazing what software can do. It's a grid. It's an array that looks like a grid. You yeah. can program in the field. All right. Hmm, what should we call that? I don't know. Well, I bet that guy's going to make a lot of money that figures out that name. <laughs> uh, also, from Ken, uh, Arm announced uh, free Cortex-M processor design use uh, with for uh, Xilinx FPGAs. Oh, so this is another tie-in. Okay, so... So the, the Cortex-M stuff has been free for certain 
products for anybody who wants to develop something. Um, okay. But, you know, it comes with pretty much, you know, no strings tax. You don't you're not going to get any support, whatever. So, you know, a student wants to develop a, a really basic processor. They can, like, take the Cortex M. If some group wants to, you know, do some really basic controller uh, in certain areas, they can get it for free. Uh, okay. But, you know, it looks like that they are, you know, kind of uh, advancing this to, and it's only like, what? No, it's just the gain access to the Cortex-M1, optimized version of Cortex-M0. So anything above that and the M0, I think, is uh, not royalty-free or, or, you know, kind of free for that. So it's uh, it's interesting what ARM is doing to get their technology out there. Mm-hmm. But there's enough uh, strings attached that, you know, probably not every company is going to be able to utilize these free designs. But again, you know, support, um, access to other technologies that ARM uh, has available to, you know, paying partners, uh, these things are just not bundled in. So it's, it's not an easy thing to do. It's not like just flapping it in there and everything works it's yeah it's different it is it's harder longer uh okay uh <laughs> moving right along uh utter lack of availability of an and an impending deadline may see windows 10 match its predecessor this year jeremy what the heck are you talking about well i mean it's been a couple of years since you could buy a system with windows 7 installed on it Oh, well, yeah, it's yeah. It's been a while since you've been able to buy a Windows 7 install disk. Uh-huh. And, well, Windows 10, according to net market share, which is, you know, a pretty impartial and decent way of monitoring it because they're just monitoring systems hitting the web, says that 37.44% of machines are actually on Windows 10. Hmm. That's a lower it's than a I was expecting. 40.88% on Windows 7. Now, of course, Microsoft sort of claimed that they'd be 50% adoption, you know, within a year. Didn't quite work that way. Yeah, apparently not. Uh, you know, sometimes we don't want to eat the problem. Mm-hmm. But, uh, you know, it's it's slowly happening. And the, the funniest thing that I really got out of this is when you look globally, because uh, this is specifically uh, laptops and PCs, but when you look globally at all machines hitting the internet 40 percent of them are running some type of android interesting now none of them are running the same version of android of course of because course. it is one of the most scattered types of operating systems out there but it's that's a, just a huge body market share 40 percent of everything is on android I'm and glad. you know i'm pretty glad. soon 40 percent of the uh Computers will be running Windows 10. I'm glad you know? Windows Defender did not find any any threats <laughs> on this machine. Let's see fewer notifications. Oh, great. So it's going to send me over here. Well, yeah, you have to like, look at the thing and turn it off. How about... no? Oh, is, uh, oh. oh now it's going to pop up and tell you you're it, unprotected. It did, and that, of course, didn't go to the... We didn't want the stream to see the, uh, the silly uh, WPA dialogue. Okay, well, hopefully that will... Leave us alone now. <laughs> Go back to seeing our child not happy about eating its food. That's a very pertinent picture. It is. It is. Eat your greens. Anyway. Okay. Next up, uh, Scott Michaud whipped up a news post on Microsoft releasing the Windows 10 October 2018 update. Is that what you were talking about, Josh or Jeremy? Yeah, I got a- the update yeah. uh, yesterday on my work machine. It's very exciting. Mm. Not much out has changed other than bug fixes. Well, and uh, this is the, the... Oh, there there is a new snip and frame tool. Oh. Well, this is the RTX tool, tool, right? snipping tool. This is what you need as a precursor for RTX but features? I like snipping tool. Oh, well, I think you the old... Bastards! I think, hold on, you hold killed on. Snippy! Wait, wait, no, I think the old one's still there. It is still there, uh, but they just recommend that you is. try the new one. Yeah. Because yeah. it's new and improved. Because it would be a shame if you were to continue using the old one. But they just it upgraded an old one so that you can put it on a time delay, which was 
freaking handy. Yeah, yeah. And stuff like this is why I use my own app to do like captures. I just, you know, can't rely and, on. And don't forget, it, it uh, updated dark mode. Okay. For within Windows. Isn't that a really bad Liam Neeson movie? Yes, it is. <laughs> <sighs> okay. So bad, I might have to see if I can find it again. In other news, uh, good old game celebrated 10 years by putting out a free game for everybody. Um, let's see. Oh, it's going to be a free game decided by a public uh, vote. You got like 11 hours left to vote. All right. Shadow Warrior 2, Super Hot, or Firewatch? I voted Firewatch. I voted Firewatch. Ooh. Is Firewatch good? Supposedly. Like, I would hope it is if they voted for it. All right. Well, whatever. You like wander around in gorgeous outdoors. I forget where it is. Montana. Do you, do you watch fires? Like Yellowstone, but, Montana. Yeah. Yeah. And you're supposed to be watching for fires. And like it's sort of a story. And it's like, it sounds wonderful. I doubt I'd ever pay for it. So oh. I'm voting for it. So, you, it for so free. you wander around in a forest and you look for fire. No, Beard. no. There's a murder that happens and you're investigating things. Oh. I think. Oh. And you talk on a walkie talkie to a. Exactly. To a. Helping. So kind of like it's got a wonderful system story shock. and it's utterly gorgeous. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if it looks cool. Yeah. All right. So keep an eye out for that. And then I imagine, like, I don't know, do you have to, like, have a, a login on the site? You got to have a GOG account. Okay. So everybody right now, make your GOG account. I'd imagine you have to have the account before October 4th. Mm, yeah, Probably. But it's easy to make one. Or do you not I mean, get how this? else are you going to vote for it after? Well, I mean, do you have to vote for it to get it? Or do yes. You, okay, so you have to vote. Oh. So everybody listening to this live, and if you downloaded the podcast early, uh, yeah, go vote. Yeah, apparently uh, it, it is in Wyoming, oddly enough. Oh. Interesting. Do you run around and watch for fires? No, but strange women on phones call me quite often complaining about murders. Oh. Ask you for your papers, if you have your papers. Sure. I see. Yeah. That's a different game. Yeah. Good segue. Cooler Master. Go. All right. Been a long time coming. Cooler Masters C700M. That's a pretty snazzy looking case. Wait a minute. The GPU is on an angle. Yep. You're because you know why? Why? The angle of the dangle is in direct proportion to the heat of the beat. Uh, I see. And motion of the ocean? Uh, I have no idea, but I, I don't know why it's like that. Mm. It's Cooler Master. I mean, it's... it's. There's a doohickey. It looks good. That allows you I mean, to it's got to have a cable in there to be able yep. to connect. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so How it's just exactly are you going to uh, get your, 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 your video card uh, cable that way? It's I don't understand. Ribbon. They flex. No, you I'm are? talking about like Correct. your monitor cable. Oh, oh, yeah, Probably that's a good question. Flex cable. Uh, no, I think that when you put on an angle. Hmm. Well, because if you click through, uh, there is uh, a very large space okay. for this so you GPU can, to be sitting. So you can snake it through the one of the slots that you leave. Well, no, it's not even that. It, it's built for it. Jesus, fourteen pages. I gotta find the page with the picture we're looking for. Yeah, it's uh, so the thing is that you're not looking at it to scale, right? Uh, in what did I just do? I'm did just try, I'm trying to even get damn window. I'm trying to even get uh, to the so this is like a, a perfect thread ripper case. The bloody thing is over two foot high and two foot long and a foot deep. That's I'm insane. Hold on. Wait, stop, uh, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up, scroll up. What? No, stop, oh, scroll up. Yeah. There you go. There's there you go. The, Right. I see. I guess that's where you clamp it in. And it, you know, look, you got about a what? Half inch well, that's in where between it the back. and So these look like uh, it's a pivot. So you can put it on that whatever angle you want. I would imagine. And you, you, you mount it to whichever slots you want. It doesn't have to be at the very bottom, obviously. That's just how they ship it. It's kind of like the last build page. You take a look in one of some of the builds they sort of show. Okay, so there's the, there's the GPU. There's the GPU. I want to see the cables, damn I'm, it! I'm, 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 I agree with you. I'm, I'm trying. I Wait, just... go up, up, yeah. up. 
There's See, the no, back. Don't. It's not yeah, plugged that, in. Yeah, it's crap. It's all crap. <laughs> Hero 3D, you, you suck. Why would you not plug in the video Got out? Us, <sighs> no, they're they're doing the thing where you can use it on a FreeSync monitor and using the onboard video, right? Was it a yeah, wide eye? Probably. <laughs> yes. No, it's got it's got uh, adapters like like Josh says. It's got cables which let you do this okay. and not completely screw up your system. I'm gonna give up looking. But the thing is ridiculous. So, uh, we, as long as you move uh, remove the uh, optical display because there is one hidden in there, uh, you can fit simultaneously a pair of 420 millimeter rads, a 120 millimeter, and a 240 mil. That's, simultaneously that's a lot if you prefer going the air cooling up to nine 120 or 140 millimeter fans check out these uh, mix of check out these rgbs on the bottom yeah. it's got the ground because it's reversible on. if if you like your case to be upside down you can flip it upside down what just because really? it's it's so like over engineered it, it, it's kind of amusing and uh as one commenter sort of cut the legs out from underneath it said finally a system case that looks like a household item it actually is a room heater uh, yeah. well <laughs> but like, it's a perfect thread ripper build for if you want to be silent like you can fit a 200 millimeter cooler in the freaking thing like mm -hmm. technically 198 don't quibble over two millimeters it's just like it's monstrous. That's pretty crazy. I uh, I forget what it was. It's it's upwards of like forty friggin' pounds. So it looks sort of slim and svelte. It is not. You, Wait, if you were forty pounds more, before you, you probably, put the stuff in it, I, something like that. That's like, if you're more, you could fit two full systems in this bloody thing. Isn't that like two person lift? Well, I'm more like, it's, like they, they comment it takes a few people to get it out. Well, yeah, right, Josh. Huh? Huh? I, I plead the fifth. fifth. He missed his. He missed his joke opportunity. Takes oh, two people uh, to get it out. No, like, anyway. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, oh, and you know the good news is that uh, it's only going to be four or five hundred bucks. So. Oh, only. Only. Okay. If you're really into cases, go for it. Otherwise, just bask in its immense glory. Well, Jeremy, tell me about bone conduction headphones so we can put a bow on this thing. They're spooky kids. Oh, that was bad. Yeah. Count well, Floyd. Was flirty. Worth it. And worth it, yes. But the only reason I actually put this up on the front page was just because I read that. and Well, it's October, so Count Floyd goes up. Okay. Does. Okay. Yeah. I mean, bone conduction is not a new thing. I, anyone who had a flip phone used bone conduction to talk. These ones are headphones. So you, you put them on and they clip just around your ear. The idea being that you can still hear your audio and what's going on all around you because it's not actually interfering with the ear canal. Mm -hmm. If you want to hear them better, you actually get earplugs and plug them in and it blocks out the exterior sound for a lot cheaper than, you know, sound blocking headphones. So, you know, overall, I, they're not super amazing unless you're the type that likes to be able to hear what's going on around you. In which case, you know, they're not that expensive and give it a shot. And if you don't know who Joe Flaherty is or SCTV, well, look it up. Okay. All right. Uh, let's do uh, the software, hardware software picks of the week. Let me open up some links here. Yeah, so you know, someone stole mine. Somebody <laughs> stole yours. Ken. Uh, how did... Ken, oh. Didn't realize you mentioned the free arm processors. Oh, well, okay. And Jeremy's pick was the whole free arm cores for silence. That's links. okay, I got something else here. Oh, he's going to switch it to something else? Well, I don't have a choice anymore, do yeah, I? Yeah, 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 yeah. you got to switch the... Switch is cheap... Canadian <laughs> raisin. <laughs> Just bring that up. Because that's freaking hilarious. Cheap Canadian raisins. <laughs> Raise. Raisin. Okay. 
Uh, oh, another book. Ooh. For ninety bucks Canadian, that's sixty-five bucks. That's wow! Yeah. Oh, yeah, after a rebate. rebate. Yeah. Sixty-five so you get M. bucks you rebate. Get USB-C. It's you know, it, it, if you're looking at a low-cost system, and so you're looking at Ryzen two thousand, and you're looking at the price of DDR four, and you're going, okay, well, I need to save up something for that, and want to get you know, the best video card I can, and there's this giant gaping hole in the market between two and $300. I'm going to need to shave down on my motherboard, but at the same time, I don't want something with nothing. Yep. So, hey, you know, 65 bucks, and, you know, change your credit card pin afterwards, because, oops, uh, although that's <laughs> fixed. <laughs> we hope. We hope. Yeah. It's fixed so, for now. 65 bucks is, is almost nothing. And you get a decent board out of it. And there's still going to be some older fans that are like, yeah, AAS Rock sucks. Like, no, honestly, they've been putting out solid product for a couple of years now. Yeah, I think they're, I think they're, they're a safe bet now. They've been okay. <laughs> they did have some doozies. Oh, they did when they first came out. Yeah, but I think they've, I think they've finally caught up. Yeah, these are the same people that are bitching about uh, AMD drivers. <laughs> Okay, uh, Josh. Me. Yep. Probably one of my more favorite movies of all time. That's a good movie. It's on 4K. Blu-ray. Do it. Apollo 13. Bill yeah. Paxton. He died last year. Mm. So you gotta you gotta appreciate his his uh, his moments. Yeah. In He's, the film, he was good in that movie. He can eat out the ass end out of a rhino. Yep. 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 <laughs> So it'll sound better you know, on laser disc. Oh. It's on physical media, mm -hmm. 4K. Mm -hmm. You got to have a 4K player, but you know what? Nobody can take this away from you unless they break into your house or burn your house down, or your children decides to scratch it, or update your Blu-ray player with invalid keys. Yeah, that 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 might work as well. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, fourteen bucks. No, thirteen bucks. Yeah. Apollo 13 for 13 bucks. Hey. There you go. Yeah. Like it's intentional. Great. Great film. All right. Uh, my pick is the pick I was trying to figure out last week. And uh, I was playing with this with some buddies the other day. Uh, Shell Shock Live is the name of the game. Now I can't remember the name of the game that it was like back in the day. It was some tank. Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth. There Logger. you go. Uh, no, Scorched Earth back in the day, but this is like, uh, you know, like really, really good Scorched Earth with all sorts of cool different weapons and stuff. Scorched Earth was kind of, you know, you only had like a very limited set of uh, of weapons you could use. So there it was, was back in 1992 with my 386 SX-16, mm -hmm. and we had a game that was about Look as colorful. Look at all colorful. the weapons. Look at the weapons. What? That was look at it, look at that look at the yeah we didn't have weapons like that it was all look artillery so there was, no, a, there was there was the like burrower. three different weapons but not not like that yeah anyway that's some weapons and there's the multiplayer with insane amounts of people I didn't even know you could do uh, eight wave I'm not gonna really like these guys unless their uh, DLC upgrade is called uh, PTSD. <laughs> Uh, anyway, anyway, looks cool. Uh, I played it for a while. It was definitely fun. Uh, looks like it's kind of a bit of a grind if you wanted to try to just if you're if you're like got to catch them all and you just want to like get every single like weapon and stuff. You're gonna be at that for a while. So I would say try not to do that and just like enjoy the game with some buddies that don't necessarily have their uh, accounts like as upgraded as uh, as you. I think it tries to balance it out regardless. Um, so you don't get someone with just like all the things just annihilating people. Um, making it unfair. Anyway, uh, let's see. Is that it? Is that the show? Uh, I think that's, that's the show. That's the show. That's it. PCPro.com slash podcast if you want to see the show notes and see, uh, see Jeremy's uh, cheap Canadian rise in the show notes. Anyway. Rise and then, and then, and then, and then, and then, and no, 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 no. Uh, um, my, 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 my. Yep. Twitter.com slash PCPer is the Twitter. The site's PCPer.com. 
And uh, that's it for the podcast. So with that, I wish all of you a good day or good night or whenever you're listening to this. See you next week. Thanks to RX Bar for supporting the PC Perspective podcast. RX Bar is a whole food protein bar with no BS. Get 25% off your first order at rxbar.com slash pcper and use the promo code pcper. That's rxbar.com slash pcper, promo code pcper.